There's an old New Yorker cartoon where a man is sitting in meditation in his living room, and his wife and a friend are in the next room looking in on him. And the wife is saying, Frank used to be such an interesting neurotic before he took up yoga. I know quite a few people who are afraid that when they meditate they start getting dull and grim. But you have to remember, a lot of what makes us interesting is our neuroses. And do you want to continue being neurotic just to be interesting? And as for being grim, we are serious about happiness. That's true. We don't have to be grim, though. We realize that there are dangers in the world, but the right way to live with the dangers is to find strength inside. And then come from that strength, not forgetting that there are dangers. I was listening recently to a Dharma teacher someplace talking about how the practice has to be animated by a sense of trust. We went on to say this doesn't have to be trust in anything particular, just general trust in the world, I don't know what, whatever. That is totally opposed to what the Buddha taught. He said all skillful qualities in the mind come from heedfulness. And if heedfulness is a realization, there are dangers around us. But we can manage them, and our actions make a huge difference. So you have to be careful, but being careful doesn't mean that you have to be grim. Barry Lopez went up and stayed with the native Alaskans for a long time. He noticed that there was a quality about them. He said there were words in their language for which you don't really have good equivalents in English. But they came down to a sense of watchfulness, apprehension, in other words, heedfulness. But he also said that they had a good sense of humor. They were able to laugh in the midst of dangers because they realized that having a good sense of humor actually helps eliminate a lot of dangers. If you don't have a sense of humor, you're actually creating more dangers for yourself. Of course, what is the kind of humor you want? You don't want to be snide, sarcastic. And a lot of it starts with learning how to laugh at yourself, seeing your own foibles, seeing your own defilements. with a sense of humor, and that gives you a sense of detachment. You notice this with the Ajans. They knew how to laugh at themselves, which is why when they laughed at their students, it wasn't a mean and nasty laugh. It was just seeing that the students had the same problems they had. They learn how to laugh with you. And so when you learn how to laugh at yourself, you're also able to laugh with other people. And that makes your humor have a lot less sting. It becomes a humor that's actually more useful and enjoyable. Because it comes from a sense, okay, you've got your weaknesses and you can see them as weaknesses and you recognize them as weaknesses. And the fact that you can laugh at them means that you can step back from them. I mean, it's a part of you that can pull out of that weakness. It's one of your best protections against dangers inside and out, is learning how to laugh at yourself. And that comes with developing the strength you need inside to deal with other dangers. This is one of the reasons why we meditate, is to put the mind in a good position. Mindful, alert, ardent. So that no matter what comes up, you're ready. Restraint of the senses is all about this. We tend to just jump into the things we see and hear and pick up through our senses without any sense of wariness at all. But we should be wary, because there are parts of the mind that will get inflamed by some of the things you may see or hear, and the parts of the mind that want to get inflamed are actually looking for something to get lustful about, or greedy about, or angry about. And you've got to keep those in check. 
because if you don't keep those in check as you go through the day, you have a lot of garbage to clean out as you sit down and meditate. And as the Buddha said, when you try to keep rain on your senses like this, you need to have the body as your post. In other words, you stay with the body as much as you can. Try to make the sense of the breath as refreshing as you can. You don't want to have just a sense of equanimity as you go through life. You want to have a sense of positive enjoyment of how it feels to have a body. One of the reasons we work with the breath is so you feel comfortable inside your body. No matter what the world outside may say about your body, you're perfectly fine with it inside. Now we've got a friend inside, you've got a sense of well-being, so that you're not so hungry to go out and look out and find things to snatch and grab and chew on outside. So as you're meditating, realize that having a sense of fullness, having a sense of rapture is a necessary part of the practice. You try to develop it as much as you can while you're sitting. And then you try to carry that through the day as your food. It's like your lunch bag for the day. And when you have the sense of feeling comfortable inside yourself, you're less threatened by other people. And in a healthy way, you find that you need them less as well. This is where the Fear about being dull comes in. Oftentimes we're witty and interesting out of fear that other people will not like us. But a lot of the effort that goes into being witty and interesting can take a lot away from us, and a lot of it comes from neurotic energy. So be okay with the fact that when you're feeling comfortable inside yourself, you don't need other people's approval. And you'll find that you may be less of a sparkling conversationalist, but you may be a better listener. And you begin to realize there are a lot of people out there who really want good listeners. And here again, though, you run into the fact that because you've developed a good sense of humor, your, your humor will change as you meditate. It's not that you don't have a sense of humor anymore. It just goes through a change. And it's less an aspect of idle chatter or, or the other forms of wrong speech, and it becomes actually a, a type of right speech. I mean, genuine humor, genuine wit, a sign of intelligence. You see the ironies of life. And because you feel more secure inside, you're, you're not threatened by them, so you can see them more clearly. One of the things that attracted me to John Fuang was his sense of humor. And he wasn't going around through the day trying to be humorous and interesting. Those things would pop up and he'd notice them and he'd have a good comment to make on them. So as you meditate, don't be afraid of becoming grim or dull. We're serious and we're quiet, but we still have our sense of humor and we still have our intelligence. It's just that now as you meditate, they're more firmly based, so they're not fueled by a neurotic energy or fear or whatever. They're fueled by well-being. They're fueled by a sense of heedfulness that sees that there are dangers in life and that the main dangers are inside. And when you take care of the dangers inside, then there's really nothing to fear from outside. There's that kind of seriousness that leads to a huge sense of relief. So it's not weighty, it's, it's very light. It means you have a different kind of energy in yourself, and you bring a different kind of energy to the world. And it's all for the good. <laughs>